In this tutorial, we're going to deal with a many-to-many -many relationship. If we examine the properties of the relationships as they exist, we can see that there is a relationship at the moment between the product table and the invoice table, and this is defined as a one-to-many relationship. This means that each invoice can have one product attached to it, but each product can appear on many invoices. We'd like a many-to-many -many relationship so that on each invoice we can have lots of products and each product can appear on lots of invoices. Unfortunately, there's no option for a many-to-many -many relationship within Access. What we have to do instead is we have to create a new entity. And this new entity exists between the invoice table and the product table. We're going to call this entity invoice product and it's going to facilitate a relationship. In order to do it though, we have to make a few changes to the structure of the invoice table. The first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the relationship that exists between the invoice and product table. And I'm right clicking on the relationship and going to delete. Once the relationship has been removed between the invoice table and the product table, we can then remove the machine ID from the invoice table. I'm going to close the relationship view and I'm going to open up the invoice table. If I open it in design view, I can now remove the machine ID. I'm right clicking and choosing delete rows. If I try and remove that field before I remove the relationship, I'm going to get an error message telling me that I can't do it. So I have to take the relationship off first. I'm going to create a new table. And this table is going to be the invoice product table. It's going to sit between the invoice table and the product table. I'm going to give it a field invoice product ID, which is an auto number. Then I'm going to add in invoice ID as a number. These two fields combined are going to make up my primary key. This is called a composite key when we use more than one field to uniquely identify the records. Strictly speaking in this case I don't need a composite key because I have an auto number field but in order to get the right relationships I'm going to set it up. I'm going to save my table as TBL invoice product. And I'm going to add in product ID. In fact, machine ID. And this is going to be a lookup to the machine table or the product table. Again, I'm going to sort it by machine name, and I'm hiding the key column. A relationship has now been created between this invoice product table and the product table. Notice though at this point there's no relationship between the invoice table and the invoice product table. This field, the invoice field, is simply a number. I'm also going to add in a quantity, and this is the quantity purchased, which is a number. And I'm adding ID onto the invoice field just so that it matches existing structures. So I've now created my invoice product table at the relationships. If I right click, I can add in my table and we see that it already has a line connecting it to the product table. Just going to rearrange these. The relationship type is currently undefined. I'm going to modify the relationship and enforce referential integrity. And now I'm going to take the invoice ID from the invoice table and I'm just going to click and drag it on top of the invoice ID in the invoice product table. I 
and enforce referential integrity. This structure now allows me to have multiple transactions per invoice. If I open up my invoice product table, what I find is the structure is a little bit difficult to follow, but the relationships have been designed in such a way as it makes sense to create an invoice rather than access these values by their table. In the next tutorial, we'll create an invoice that has a form with a subform.